What's going on guys and welcome to another video brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack and in this video we are going to be making an early game automatic mining machine otherwise known as Captain Jack's magic mining machine on the server. Now this thing is pretty low tech but really powerful and you can make this really early on and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to build it for you and I'm going to show you a screenshot from above in case you just want to copy it real quick. And then I'm going to show you how fast it goes and how much power it uses. All right, so the main component of this uh, machine is the atomic reconstructor fitted with the lens of the miner from Actually Additions. We're going to need an auto breaker and auto placer. We're going to need a source of stone. So I'm using thermal expansions extruder. We are going to need one bucket of lava, a water source, some basic redstone stuff, and some power item and fluid transportation. Now, a lot of these blocks are interchangeable if you don't have some of these mods. In your mod pack, you can use other things. For example, Thermal Dynamics um, has some piping um, solutions, and there's more types of things that will lay blocks and pick up blocks automatically from other mods. But this is basically what you need to get started here. All right, so what does this thing do? Well, basically, a timer pulses a redstone signal to set off an atomic reconstructor with the lens of the miner pointed at a piece of stone, which will turn it into some sort of random ore. The auto breaker breaks it, picks it up, puts it into a storage crate, and the auto placer is placing down new stone so that the atomic reconstructor can continually turn stone into ore, which is great. So what you're going to need is a source of water. I'm using a sink. The water is going into an igneous extruder supplied with one bucket of lava set to stone, auto outputting into the block placer, and bam, the whole thing works wonderfully. Now, the key to making this work properly is to make sure the atomic reconstructor's power hits 100% or slightly over 100% before it fires off again. If it starts firing below 100%, then what you're going to have happen is you're, you're going to run out of power, your uh, system's going to get drained, and you're going to start shooting cobblestone, and the cobblestone's going to back up. So you see, I had this set a little bit too high, the machine backed up a little bit, and I have 14 cobblestone. So if you see cobblestone going into your collection chest, if you've made this machine, you have to slow down your machine. In this case, I've, uh, I've supplied it with 300 RF per tick that's going in there. And with 300 RF per tick, I'm basically setting a timer delay of 325 to make sure it reaches 100% or over before it ticks every single time. Now, it's important to note, too, that depending on the ore that it creates, the atomic reconstructor will use a little bit more in some cases, a little bit less in others. So if it turns it into diamond, it's going to use more power. If it turns it into tin, it's going to use less power. So you have to test this out and make sure you hit a sweet spot because you definitely do not want this thing to get behind and to run out of power because you're just going to be creating a ton of waste. All right, so let's go ahead and build one of these things. I'm going to put my timer down followed by my three repeaters. The repeaters are basically to delay the signal because if the signal reaches the auto breaker too quickly, it's just going to break a piece of stone and it's going to be a disaster. I'm going to increase the timer delay so it doesn't start firing 100 times. And then I'm going to make sure all my repeaters are set to four ticks for a maximum delay. My auto breaker is going to go here, and that's going to break the block that's right there. My atomic reconstructor is going to go here, and I have it on top of a muffler block because these things are extremely annoying. I'm going to put on my lens of the miner. I'm going to put my auto placer here. I'm going to make sure I hit this with a redstone signal to change it from pulse to deactivation and also pulse. Uh, yeah, to pulse. I'm sorry. They should be. They should both be pulse. Um, you can do that by hitting it with a redstone signal. Um, next, I'm going to put down my sink and the sink needs to be exporting liquids to my igneous extruder, which is going to go here. I'm going to set this to auto output enabled. So that's going to go directly into there. I'm going to set this to stone, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab a bucket of lava, throw that right in there. There we go. Perfect. Now we need to attach fluid and power. So I'm going to take my fluid from the sink and bring it into there. I'm going to take my power, and I need to power the atomic reconstructor and the igneous extruder, which is only using 20 RF per tick, which is basically nothing. So we need to export... Auto output enabled. There we go. It's going into there. It drops down. It's going to pulse. The auto breaker is going to pick it up. And then I need to have some sort of inventory that this sucks out of. So this is basically how you set it up. Super simple, not complicated. For those of you who want to pause the video and take a quick screenshot, this is the look from above. I have those three arrows down there in the bottom, just signifying that you need to place the repeaters facing that direction. All right. So how powerful can you make this? Pretty darn powerful. This setup is using, I think, 2200 RF per tick, and I have the timer set down to 40. This is the lowest I could, I could really go safely. Um, 
with the timing of the timers and everything. I mean, by the time you get to this point, you're gonna you're gonna have some sort of other ore generation block, like environmental tech or something. Um, but this can consume an enormous amount of power, but it also can go really quickly. Let's just see what this thing pulls up now. So I've gotten two emeralds and three diamonds for all of this ore, which kind of sucks, but it's not a big deal because early game, you're really not looking for that many diamonds. What you're looking for is tons of iron, tons of tin, tons of copper, stuff like that, tons of coal to fuel your crap, um, and maybe even lorium for your big reactor or extreme reactor. So this thing, early game, pulls up the ores you need. And it's great. All right, so one more cool thing that you can do with this machine is that you can go into the nether, pull up a bunch of nether rack, load that in here. Just make sure you stop the flow of stone, otherwise it's going to keep changing. And this thing will pull up tons of nether quartz. It basically almost has to change to nether quartz. And if it doesn't, it's changing to something like cobalt or ardite. So really awesome way, even early game, to eliminate those trips to the nether. Basically, it's Minecraft, but nobody's got time for mining. So build Captain Jack's automatic mining rig and uh, yeah, that's it guys, stay poised.